was a hot, hot summer's day. And, uh, you know, there's this guy just batting balls out there, rat-a-tat-tat, out into the night sky. And every one was just a bullet going out there dead straight. And, um, you know, I was 12, 13 years old. So I asked uh, my dad, who's that? And he said, that's Mo Norman. And I said, really? He really just hits the ball so differently. Even then I knew a little bit about golf and traditional swings. And his was so beyond the traditional that even if you didn't know much about golf, you knew that this was very strange and unusual. And yet it was so effective. So my dad told me a bit about him. And he said that, you know, the thing is with Mo, a lot of people laugh at him because he does it so differently. I mean, you look at him here, it's a hot night. He's wearing a turtleneck. He's wearing slacks that don't come down to, the, to his shoes properly. And when you hear him talk, you'll hear him repeat himself. So a lot of people just laugh when they see Mo. My dad said he's known as one of the best ball strikers in the game. My dad liked golf. And just look at the way he hits the ball. You know, I don't know why people can't look past that. But right from that moment, I became fascinated with him. And I became fascinated with, uh, you might say, you know, the unusual and, and the extreme in, in human behavior and certainly in golf. And I think to that uh, experience with Mo, I can sort of um, trace my own fascination with the golf swing and of how to hit the golf ball. And uh, it really started right there. Sometimes you have that feeling when you're about to see something that everybody's talked about and, and people talked about the way Mo Norman hit the golf ball. And you'd and you'd think it can't be that good. He can't be that good. And then we went out out to this place, a club near Orlando, and he was hitting he was hitting drivers right off the grass to a little patch out there, uh, you know, 225, 230 yards. And you think, my God, he really can do that. The best story I got was from Ken Venturi. And Venturi knew his, his golfers. He was a very close friend of Ben Hogan's, and, and he'd played with them since Venturi was a little kid. And I said, who do you think was the best ball striker? Was, was Mo in league with uh, Hogan? He, he said, well, in fact, you, you could argue that Mo was a better ball striker than Hogan. He said that Hogan was a static shot maker. You just hit that little fade all the time, but Mo could do whatever he wanted with the golf ball. So uh, Venturi said, yeah. Mo Norman, best ball striker who ever lived. See, one of the strange things too is Hogan at one time said that if you hit a straight shot, it's an accident, right? So of course Mo picks up on that. Who? Every time I hit, it's an accident. Every time I hit, it's an accident. <laughs> because oh, Mo never curved it, right? It was always dead straight with every golf club. He turns to me and he folds his arms like he's holding himself together, waiting for my response to Hogan's move. I said, Mo, that looks more like Louise Suggs to me than Ben Hogan. <laughs> well, that is not what he expected to hear, right? I, that is the fastest hundred yards I ever ran in my life. He, yeah. would, he would have killed me at that time. But a, a day later, when I wasn't paying attention, he sneaks up behind you, grabs me, hugs me, kisses me on the cheek and pinching. I'll give you Louise Suggs, eh, Louise Suggs. And he was laughing and giggling and loving every minute of it, you know? And I remember driving in the highway and you're just above the, the parking lot of where we turned in. And I could see a trunk, the Cadillac. I could see the trunk open and the Titleist bag sitting over on the side and kind of about 10, 15 people kind of standing around. And I'm like, well, he showed up, right? I said, that's awesome, right? So I went over and I thanked Marcy. I said, Mikey, you have no idea how, how good this moment is, right? I said, this is where he needs to be and this is awesome. And, you know, tell Gus, thanks a lot. Not five minutes later, he's handing out clubs to my, my, my nieces and nephews and here the kids screaming golf balls in the parking lot, hitting cars with golf balls on a gravel driveway with his clubs and I'm like, Mo, the, the kids are going to wreck your club. He says, ah, don't worry about it. He says, he goes, I get them given to me anyway. He says, no. He goes, look at them, they're having fun. I said, well, they're having fun. I said, yeah, there's a few cars just got hit. He's like, ah, as long as they don't hit this one, he goes. <laughs> Gus and Audrey just, uh, it was wonderful that they were there to take care of Mo and, 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 and I know he really appreciated was very lucky that they were there. And uh, Ernie Hauser was another person involved. But uh, see, that that comes from the days they all grew up together, and Gus and Ernie. And, 
And Mo was fortunate to have that. And as Mo's life got a little more difficult and his health was uh, going down, you know, he, he needed that help. And, and there couldn't be a better group of people that, that helped Mo that way. Every time I think about it, you know, <clears throat> he said to me two days before he died, been nice knowing you. And uh, I still can see him sitting there. <clears throat> but we all knew he wasn't healthy and, and, and uh, he was probably not going to last that long. I mean, his lifestyle wasn't conducive to rehabilitation. But I remember him walking out of the golf course at Rockway and he was sitting on a cart and he said, been nice knowing you. And one thing with Mo, he never did was ever say goodbye. Never. You'd be, you'd be with him, he'd be in the pro shop, he'd be sitting there for three hours. You'd go out to just see somebody coming off the 18th green, you come in, he was gone. He always just sort of wandered away. You know, so <clears throat> for him to, to say to me, been nice knowing you, he knew that he must have known that it was close.